Hello everyone, I'm Dan Philgreen, and welcome to Shell Point Today for Wednesday, August the 3rd. On today's show, Ruth Duper and David Lee show us how to make a delicious strawberry smoothie. And we'll find Melody Broad out at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center, where she will bring us another fit tip. But first, we'd like to remind you about tomorrow's presentation in the Grand Cypress Room. Jeannie Veldman from Ising's Travel will present upcoming trips and exciting destinations that have recently been added to their travel programs. You'll see beautiful photographs from around the world and get answers to your travel questions. Light refreshments will also be served. The presentation begins at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. Also tomorrow, you can come learn about nutrition and the immune system. Carrie Blomers from Lee Memorial Health System will discuss how the immune system works, what lifestyle factors may cause us to get sick, and tips to avoid an illness. Come and learn how to keep your immune system in tip-top shape at 2 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. It's time for another installment of What's Cooking at Shell Point. Ruth Duber is joined by David Lee to show us how to blend up a delicious strawberry smoothie. Here's Ruth and David. Hello, I'm Ruth Duber. And I'm David Lee. What's cooking at Shell Point? Okay, we're going to do something that's going to be very quick and easy and very much into summer. And good. Um, and I'm going to make a strawberry smoothie. Um, I've cut up some strawberries, and of course right now they're very reasonably priced. Uh, it calls for a cup and a half. Um, I don't know. It's, it's hard to measure cut up fruit. So I'm just going to put this in. And there's a couple more in there into the blender. And then you want cream cheese. Now, I did buy the less fat. Uh, it's, you know, entirely up to you. You can use the full fat. So we will put these little, little cut up pieces in there. And then we want a half a cup of confectioner's sugar, uh, powdered sugar, whatever you want to call it. This is a half a cup. And of course it has to go over to the blender. And with this, make sure you put the lid on or we will have powdered sugar <laughs> on you and yes. on Dan <laughs> and everybody else. This takes a little while. And I had a thought this morning, um, blueberries are in season. Why not? Let's just add a few blueberries. So I'm just going to dump these in. Whoops, don't let them get away. And so now we'll blend it again. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. And David is going to do this for me. He's going to blend in and fold in. A, it calls the half of, uh, half of this eight ounce. And I got the light. I got the light, so that is keeping this a little better for your diet. So I'm going to push this in here. Actually, I like the little okay. flecks of the blueberries in there. So, David, I'm going to let you take over. Okay. And you want this folded in, Fold right? Folded in. Mm hmm Okay. What I do sometimes is put about a third of it in and mix it more than, not really fold it, but to get it started and then put the rest in. And Ruth, as you well know, folding means... Mm -hmm trying to keep as much air as possible That's right. in this. So, while it seems like it takes a while, that's mm -hmm. what gives it the nice light flavor. Now, actually, it is better when it's fully chilled. It takes about two hours or so, but, um, but we're gonna taste it anyway, even because it's still good. I often don't completely mix it because it takes the air out of it. Okay, so right. you can do that. You want to put some in that, put that in that Ooh. wine glass. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's good. Okay, now this is the fun part. 
Mm. Um, I have some toasted almonds there. You want to sprinkle a couple on the top? I'd be glad to. See, I'm trying to dress things up like, <laughs> like you and Margie do. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. There Ladies it is. first. All righty. Mm. As I say, it would be better when it's fully chilled. Well, I'll come back in a couple hours and we'll have mm -hmm. some more. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love it with the blueberries in it. Yeah. Yeah, it adds <laughs> a little different flavor to it. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, we like it. I'm going to put the recipe up on the website, and I hope you'll try it and come back and see us again. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye now. You know, the LifeQuest Aquatic Center on the island is a great place for exercise on any level. Just getting into the cool water on a warm day can be so relaxing. There's easy access to the pool for everyone, and what a great way to get your body moving and your blood circulating, even with some low-impact stretches and exercises. And now, here's fitness instructor Melanie Broad on location with another fit tip. Hi, Melanie Broad. Thank you for joining me at the Aquatic Center with today's fit tip. One more balance exercise you can practice in the pool with the noodle. And all you do is you take a giant step forward with your foot. Your back heel should naturally rise up off the bottom of the pool. And then you would lift your front toe up. And to make it more difficult, you would get those noodles up and out of the water so you don't have the buoyancy of the noodle to help you balance. Good. Back heel is up. Front toe is up, right? Bring the noodle back down. When you switch legs, I want you to give me a big hop. Big hop as you switch legs. Back foot's on it. Front foot's on it. Heel, you got it. Get that noodle up. Hold it. Can you look up today? Take a big breath in. Relax it down. Bring your feet together. Good job, everybody. That's a great tip, fit tip. Easy to do. Challenge your balance. Thanks for joining me and again for another fit tip. I'm Coach Iggy, I'm a certified Zumba instructor, and I'm here to tell you all about Zumba Fitness. The new sessions are coming up. They are six-week sessions for $55 each. The classes are Monday, 12.45 to 1.30. We also now have a new secondary session Fridays, also at the exact same time. You also get the bonus of being able to take both classes for $95 as a discount if you put them together. All sessions are six weeks at a time, and I would love for you to come. There's wonderful music that are Latin-based and world-based, so you can learn dances from all around the world. All you have to do is bring a smile and lots of energy, and we'll work out without even noticing we're working out. I hope to see you there. And now it's time to cover all of today's happenings, menus, and Village Church connections. Hello, and welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley. And I'm Caitlin Van Scoy. And we're going to go over the activities for you here today at Shell Point. We're going to start at 8 o'clock with men's round robin tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. Also at 8 o'clock we have pickleball. That'll be at the pickleball courts. Lily and Company Jewelers will be at the Resident Activity Center at 845. And Jurassic Travel will be in the Egret Room at 9 o'clock. We have the Watercolor Group with Phil Hilton down in the Art Studio at 9 o'clock. And at 9.15, the card making and scrapbooking group will be in the Tarpon Room. The ladies' Bible study will be in the Osprey Room at 10 o'clock. And 10 o'clock is also the time for the men's match play tennis down at the Woodlands. And the Model Yacht Sailing Club will be at the Woodlands Commons Lake at 10.15. And our last activity of the morning is 11.30 Health Connections class, Agility, Balance, and Flexibility for Everyday Life. That's in the Health Club on the Island. Caitlin, what do we have this afternoon? Well, we're going to start at 1245 with a Health Connections class, Advanced Strength and Conditioning. That's in the Health Club. Chess is going on in the Library Lounge at 1 o'clock. And at 145, Balance and Mobility Advanced will be in the Health Club. Pilates Stretch is going on in the Health Club at 3 o'clock. We move to 5 o'clock for the Singles Table. That will be available at the Crystal Dining Room. And we round out our Wednesday with prayer and praise at 7.15 at the Village Church. 
Well, thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Menus for Wednesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is a marinated pork chop with quinoa and roasted tomato. For dinner, they have their a la carte menu. The soup of the day is chicken florentine. In the Island Cafe, the sandwich special is a grilled chicken pita with a side-tossed salad for $7.75. Dinner specials on the Palm Grill are seared ribeye for $19.95 or tomato walnut tilapia for $17.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Welcome to Villas Church Connections. I'm David Pavey. Some time ago, a story in the Scottish Evening News caught my attention. The hero, or should I say the villain, was Giuseppe Canata, age 55, an Italian national who had lived in Barcelona in Spain for about 10 years. Canata had become a compulsive gambler, running up debts equivalent to £20,000 sterling, about $30,000 at the time. Desperate to find big money in a hurry, he made a trip to Edinburgh in Scotland with a cleverly devised plan. He walked into Clellan Brown Jewellers on Rose Street, where he expressed an interest in buying a two-carat diamond. The clerk asked Kanata to return in two days, as the very expensive stone had to be special ordered from a London supplier. On the appointed day, therefore, Kanata went back to view the precious gem. Admiring it, he asked for a discount, thereby distracting the sales assistant who had to consult with colleagues. As soon as the sales assistant turned her back, Kanata pocketed the real diamond and replaced on the counter a fake. When she returned, he asked if he could make a phone call to check if the price was acceptable and walked out of the store ostensibly to make the phone call. When her client didn't return within a few minutes, the assistant decided to place the valuable stone under lock and key. Suddenly she realized that the genuine gem had been swapped for a synthetic one and the thief was long gone. That afternoon, Clellan Brown, the owner of the jewellery store, had to make a previously scheduled trip to London. So after reporting the theft to the Scottish police, he made his way to Edinburgh Station and boarded the train for the 330-mile trip, settling down in one of the compartments to read a book. At one point in the journey, however, Mr. Brown was disturbed by another passenger in the same compartment who stood up to take something from his bag stored in the overhead rack. Brown couldn't believe his eyes. Lo and behold, the other passenger was none other than the thief who had stolen the diamond worth £20,000 from his store that very morning. When the thief had sat down again and settled, Brown quietly slipped out of the compartment into the corridor, made his way to the conductor, and had him contact London Transport Police to inform them that there was a thief on board. As soon as the train arrived at London's King Cross station, a few hours later, Kanata was welcomed to the capital city by officers of the law who frisked him found the two-carat diamond in a secret pocket in his trousers. Kanata was promptly escorted back to Edinburgh to be tried. He pleaded guilty, but spent the next 30 months in jail. We reap what we sow, King David observed in Psalm 7. The wicked conceive evil. They dig a pit to trap others and then fall into it themselves. The trouble they make for others backfires on them. David's son Solomon picked up the same warning in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10. Whoever digs a pit may fall into it. And that's what Kanata did. He dug a pit to rob others, but it backfired and he wound up paying the price. He fell into a pit of his own making. 
This principle is played out in dramatic style in the Bible story of Esther. This beautiful, exiled Jewish orphan who had been raised by her uncle Mordecai was personally chosen by King Ahasuerus of Persia to become queen. Queen! When Uncle Mordecai refused to bow down and pay homage to Haman, a high official of the king, Haman became infuriated and plotted to destroy not just Mordecai, but all the Jews in the kingdom. Haman also built a huge scaffold on which he planned to hang Mordecai. But the king remembered how Mordecai had once saved his life. So Esther the queen informed the king of Haman's genocidal plot and asked him to punish Haman. The king gave the order and wicked Haman was hanged to death on the very gallows he had built for Mordecai. Like Kanata the thief, Haman the villain reaped what he sowed, falling into the pit he made for others. The Apostle Paul looked at the other side of this reaping what we sow coin. He advised the Christians in Galatia, those who live to please the Holy Spirit will harvest everlasting life. So let's not get tired of doing what's good. At just the right time we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone. So, rather than falling into a pit we dig, let's work towards reaping a harvest of blessing by doing what's good. And thank you once again for tuning in to Village Church Connections. Thanks for watching Shell Point today. Tune in again tomorrow when we'll give you another bird's eye view of the property here at Shell Point. This time, we're going out on a limb to bring you some of the beauty here around us. And we'll hear about the Legacy Foundation's Money Week once again. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Wednesday, August 3rd. I'm Dan Philgreen on behalf of all of us here at Shell Point TV. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.